I'm joined now by four candidates to look ahead to the debate tonight from Alberta. Garnet Jenis is the Conservative candidate for re-election in the riding of Sherwood, Fort, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Don Davies is the NDP candidate for re-election in the BC riding of Vancouver Kingsway. And here in the studio, I'm joined by Chris Rogers, the Liberal candidate in the suburban Ottawa riding of Carleton. And Lorraine Reckmans is the Green Party candidate in the riding of Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, Rideau Lakes. Good to see you all. Thank Good you. To see Thanks you. Thanks for being here to talk about tonight and what it means. And, and uh, Mr. Jenis, maybe I can start with you. A lot of observers think that your leader, Mr. Scher, needs to have a, a good night tonight in the debate. He'll likely face more attacks over his social conservative views and his climate change plan. What do you think Andrew Scheer has to do tonight? Well, I, I think it's going to be an interesting debate. Obviously, a lot of people on stage and uh, Justin Trudeau and Elizabeth May both coming in as fairly experienced debaters. Uh, but Andrew Scheer has a very positive, constructive plan, a lot of detailed policy released and I believe we're the uh, maybe the Green Party as well but certainly of the major three we're the only parties that that uh, is costing all of our proposals so I, I think uh, Canadians will look forward to hearing Andrew's positive plan uh, and hopefully they'll have an opportunity to hear all of those points in the midst of uh, maybe some of the sniping that's going to take place as well. Yeah, do, do you agree that he needs to have a, a and, I, and it's, it's a little bit apples to oranges a, that he needs to have a better performance than he had in the French language debate on TVA last week. Now this is an English language debate I get it uh, but does he need to do better than he did in that one? Well to be frank I, my French isn't quite at the level of being able to say uh, in terms of relative performance um, I, I know that, uh, again, Andrew Scheer is up against a number of people who have previous leaders debate experience, uh, and Justin Trudeau will be doing everything he can to run away from his record and to not talk about uh, the last four years. Uh, but, you know, I, I think uh, Andrew Scheer is going to communicate a, a, a positive message effectively, and people are going to respond well to that. Mr. Rogers, I, I bet it will feel a lot uh, at times tonight, like a five against one debate for, for Justin Trudeau. He is the guy that people are going after, but uh, he's going to deal with Andrew Scheer and, and some, some Max Bernier probably on the right and some Elizabeth May and Jugmeet Singh on the left. What does he have to do tonight? Uh, well, and I think actually uh, the last four years uh, is uh, Mr. Trudeau's uh, greatest uh, uh, asset going into tonight. We've got a record of four years of strengthening the middle class, of taking uh, measures to protect the environment, of uh, building communities uh, through our infrastructure uh, uh, investments, and we've also got a solid plan for the future. So I think this is a great opportunity for him to talk about the successes we've had uh, and moving forward, uh, how we're going to build on that, um, especially in light of the fact that the Conservatives have no platform. Um, it hasn't been released. Uh, and so uh, I think that will be a, a clear contrast for, for a lot of Canadians. All right. Does, does, but, I mean, there's, there is the record of the last four years. We'll get back to Mr. Janice in a minute. But there is a, uh, you say, the record of the last four years. If everybody was happy with it, why are you tied in the polls with the Conservatives? Uh, I think Canadians are pleased to see uh, investments in our communities. When I'm on the doors every day, uh, we're talking about infrastructure investments. We're talking about the fact that we've cut taxes for the middle right. class. Why isn't there a 20-point gap in the polls then? Well, there's only one poll that counts, as, as we all know in politics. But uh, I think Canadians are genuinely pleased with, uh, with the success. And they know the plan is and they, and they know uh, what the plan is moving forward. Okay. Uh, Mr. Davies, I, I think... Uh, your leader, Jagmeet Singh, I, I think there's a, a general consensus that he's he's kind of exceeded expectations, that he's grown as the campaign's gone along. Still a lot way, uh, a long way back from front-running parties, though. What, what's Jagmeet Singh's job tonight? And, uh, you know, you, you want him to do well. You're in, uh, there's tough fights across the country, and one of them is yours, I know, and you're working hard out there. What, what do you want to see from him tonight? Well, frankly, I just want to see more of the same. I, I think Jagmeet Singh has, has really found his voice. And he's speaking with a lot of authenticity. I think we have the most progressive platform of any party, and it's actually fairly bold. And contrary to what uh, Garnet said, our, our platform is also completely costed out as well. So um, I, I think uh, Jagmeet's also speaking with a gravitas and a, almost a prime ministerial presence, particularly if you look at how he handles the issues of racism or discrimination. Um, and, and I'm feeling a lot of momentum. I think Jagmeet Singh is the only leader really who has, has this momentum behind him. And so I think he's going to have a very strong debate tonight and show Canadians what a progressive leader speaking with credibility and authenticity really sounds like. And I think that's going to contrast very much to Mr. Trudeau, who has lost a lot of credibility, particularly 
on the center left of this country. All right, let's talk a little bit about the, the center left. Ryan Reckman's the, the Greens are, uh, we've seen the last couple of weeks, uh, slipping a little bit in the, in the momentum they had, it would seem. And, and we know from at least a couple of polls, half the Greens supporters say they haven't yet uh, decided how they will vote. So, I mean, how does Elizabeth May convince her supporters in this debate tonight to make sure that they follow through and vote Green? Right. I think, I mean, in the debate, people are going to see that she is truly a trusted leader. I think she's been voted one of the most trustworthy of all of the candidates. Uh, so she's genuine. Uh, she's been in the spotlight for decades. And, you know, we just know Elizabeth May is exactly the way she is as she appears. So I, I'm expecting that she's going to come out and convince Canadians that our platform is good for Canada. It's good for the people, the pharmacare, the universal daycare programs that we're offering, and a message, a special, special message to the youth of this country that the Greens are going to take serious action on climate climate change. Mr. Janus, let me let me follow up with you on that. This, this idea that, uh, you know, um, how big a, of a threat do you think it is uh, where, not so much for conservatives such as yourself in Alberta, but could be a big problem in BC and, and Ontario if, if some of those other progressive voters that haven't yet decided to vote liberal, but there may be New Democrat supporters and Green supporters uh, who look at the possibility of a conservative government of some form and then rally behind the liberals again as they did in the last election. How big of a threat do you think that is? Well, I, I mean, I, uh, I don't know if I want to speak for voters on the left. I think there's others who can, who can say more about that. Although it, it seems to me, obviously, that, uh, that the broken promises from the Liberals on issues like electoral reform, uh, the fact that at the end of the day they have the same targets that we do on the environment, the fact that uh, Liberals have been focused on helping uh, the SNC Lavalins of this world, uh, but not on attending to the, the, the concerns of, of uh, everyday working people. I think that's pretty clear from the record, uh, the broken promises, the corruption. My Liberal colleague says he wants to have a conversation about the record during this debate. I really hope to see a conversation about uh, the Liberal failures over the last four years. I think that's very strong ground uh, for us Conservatives uh, because, frankly, the Liberals are not talking about that at all during this campaign. If I could just quickly respond to something he said about, about platforms. Uh, our party used the opportunity to have the parliamentary budget off to cost every single one of our commitments. Uh, so when our full platform comes out, it will be fully costed by the independent parliamentary budget off. Right. Although, liberal, although there are some people concerned that it's come, it's, some people are concerned it's going to come out within the last two weeks of a campaign and won't give a whole lot of time for study when we finally do see it. But uh, well, okay. well, we'll okay. those every week. It's been studied by the independent parliamentary budget officers and the liberals who who legislated to allow the parliamentary budget officer to do that okay. have then Mr. Davies, to have the platform submitted. Mr. Davies, uh, it's going to be really important for the, what for the NDP vote to, to line up behind Jagmeet Singh and to not disappear uh, at the ballot box. Uh, how does he talk to those people tonight in terms of making sure that he's going after progressives too, just like Justin Trudeau is? How does he, how does he get them? Well, you know, last election there was, uh, I think, some narrative that the NDP had strayed from our progressive roots and, and uh, we lost votes to Liberals. That is not the case this election. You know, we have universal pharmacare. We're talking about implementing dental care. Uh, we've got, I think, the strongest uh, along to Greens climate change policy, we're talking about affordability issues, attacking the housing crisis, the kinds of things that uh, working people and middle class Canadians really care about. And, and I agree with Garnet that in the last four years, the Liberals have, have they broken just far too many promises uh, to, to keep the faith of progressives in this country. And I think you're going to see that at the ballot box. I'm feeling it on the ground here as well. Right, Mr. You know, Mr. Rogers, do we... Polls are lagging, but I, I think I'm feeling another, uh, the beginning of another wave. All right, well, well, we'll see what happens. Mr. Rogers, uh, I expect we'll hear a lot tonight of, of Justin Trudeau uh, saying to, looking probably straight into the camera, talking to progressive voters and saying, which he's really started to double down on the last couple of weeks, that it's about moving forward, not going backwards to uh, conservative policies. And Andrew Scheer, I bet we hear Doug Ford. I bet we hear Jason Kenney's names brought up in the debate again tonight. Uh, is that who he's after in this debate? Those are the people he's trying to reach? Well, we're focused on Canadians. Uh, you know, the, the, in terms of progressive voters and, and, uh, and, and those that uh, sort of straddle the centre, uh, I think they're very pleased with our reforms to increase the Canada Pension Plan. I think they're very pleased that we've brought 300,000 kids out of poverty with the Canada Child Benefit. I think they're very pleased that 
unemployment is at an all-time low. Uh, those are the sorts of pragmatic uh, policies and outcomes that we've brought forward that I think really speak to uh, progressives and, and moderates. Uh, with respect to, to Doug Ford, I mean, we've seen in the last election, we saw this trick of not presenting a platform, not talking about the cuts that were coming. But he's not running in this election. Of course not, but we've seen the same. This is, this is the same play that the that the Andrew Shear Conservatives are taking. What, what do they plan to cut? We don't know. There's no platform to 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 base this uh, uh, to make a, an assessment. Canadians are thoughtful, and they want okay, to see. Me, this. It's only two weeks left. So if we so see a platform, if we see a platform next week, and it and it doesn't look like the kinds of things you've talked, will we hear Doug Ford's name again? Then, or if, if it doesn't look like a Doug Ford platform, well, what's the language? Will that, that be the end of Doug Ford's well, name in the campaign? Look, it, it, What's the language that we've heard for, for the last several years coming from Mr. Scheer? It's about wasteful spending, wasteful spending. Well, what wasteful spending? Is, is in, uh, investing in uh, transit here in Ottawa, is that wasteful spending? Is, is uh, helping families make ends meet, is that wasteful spending? So those are the questions that they've got to answer. Okay, Lorraine Reckman, let me ask you. Uh, if, if, um, do you think tonight the debate crystallizes the ballot box question for voters? Because so far uh, we, we hear that it, it doesn't seem to be. People are not sure what the election's been about. Do you think after tonight the choices will be clear? I do. I do actually think that. I believe that. I've been encouraging voters to watch the debate because I believe that Elizabeth will be crystal clear in what we're offering Canadians. She's going to speak to the platform, she's going to speak to the policy, speak to the issues and let Canadians know what we have on offer. There's so few minutes left to speak in that debate because there's six people on that Yeah, I think on that panel. If, you, if you do the math it's going to be 10 or 12 minutes probably. And she's going to each. use every second right. of that time, right, to highlight the key proposals that we're making to Canadians. Okay, Mr. Janice, do you think the ballot box question becomes clear after tonight? Well, I, I think that uh, there's still going to be a lot of conversations that are happening. As you've mentioned, we're going to be releasing our, our platform, uh, you know, no, not today, but, but very soon. And it's going to be, unlike the Liberal platform, fully costed. And it, we've already talked about areas where we're going to make increased investments and areas where we're going to cut. We're going to cut things like corporate welfare. Uh, the Liberals love giving money to big, well-connected corporations who don't need it. They have a platform which is uncosted by the parliamentary budget officer. And so uh, I think the contrast will be clear when we have a real platform with real independent costing okay. and they're throwing out commitments to do things that they didn't do in the last four years after all the promises they broke before. So I think there's going to be a clear contrast in terms of the quality of proposals, uh, in terms of our universal okay. tax cut Mr. Davies? Uh, and other proposals to help the, the middle class. And Mr. Davies, do you think we get a clear narrative and a, and a defining ballot box issue for Canadians after tonight? Well, I think we're going to see the beginning of that. I, I was knocking on the doors the other night and someone said to me, this feels like an election without an issue. Now, now we know there's a, a lot of very serious right. issues from climate change to housing to, to people struggling um, to issues of, of Indigenous uh, welfare in this country. But I don't think that one defining issue has emerged yet. So I think that the debate tonight will will help to frame that question moving forward. And, and I think, uh, you know, Canadians don't have to choose between bad and worse. They don't have to choose between uh, the fear-based politics, the divisive politics of the Conservatives, or the corrupt, unethical behaviour of the Liberals. There's a, a, a progressive choice that uh, will bring good government to all Canadians, and I think Jagmeet Singh is going to make a very strong case for that tonight, and I think that could well be the ballot question for a lot of progressive Canadians on October 21st. Chris Rogers, i got 25 seconds for you here to finish up. Uh, will voters know exactly what the choices are after tonight? I think voters will see what the choices are tonight. Even uh, you take out some of the unknowns uh, at the moment, we have a track record. Uh, you know, Liberals have put forward a, a very ambitious plan on the environment with some concrete uh, ways to get there, uh, and they're seeing a vacuum on, on, on the Conservative side. There is no environmental plan, for example, so we know that that won't be in the platform. Again, a real the, plan Canadians are thoughtful. Uh, tonight, I think they will see uh, see their alternatives and they'll realize who's talking about them and who's talking about the other candidates. All right, and, I think, well, I, and that'll be clear. I think I, I bet you every single one of your leaders is going to be looking into that camera and tell, tell viewers that they're talking about them tonight. You're going to hear that from all leaders and uh, uh, it'll be worth watching. And I want to thank you for your time uh, today. Appreciate it all and good luck to all of you. And, thank you. Uh, we'll talk thank again. you. Take care. Thank you.